WGAL News 8's Commitment 2020 election coverage of the race for the 10th U.S. Congressional District. It is a race that people in the Susquehanna Valley and the state are watching. Tonight, hear from the two candidates running to represent Dauphin and parts of Cumberland and York counties. Incumbent Republican Scott Perry and Democrat Eugene DePasquale. Good evening, I'm Janelle Stelson. Welcome to this WGAL Commitment 2020 debate for the 10th U.S. Congressional District. Our goal tonight, find out exactly where the candidates stand on the issues you care about to help you be a more informed voter. The 10th District includes all of Dauphin County and parts of Cumberland and York counties, including York, Harrisburg, and Carlisle. Both candidates are with us tonight. As you can see, we're socially distanced in our studios. We begin with their introductions. Scott Perry graduated from Northern High School and Cumberland Perry Votech. He enlisted in the Army National Guard and served in Iraq as well as Bosnia-Herzegovina, South Korea, Germany and Honduras. He retired from the military in 2019. Perry earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration Management at Penn State and got his Master's degree in Strategic Studies at the U.S. Army War College. He started his own mechanical contracting firm, then served three terms in the State House, representing parts of Cumberland and York counties. Scott Perry has been a congressman since 2013, first elected to the then 4th District. He is married and has two children. Eugene D. Pasquale graduated from Pittsburgh Central Catholic. He graduated with a Bachelor of Arts from the College of Worcester, a Master's of Public Administration from the University of Pittsburgh, and a Juris Doctorate from Widener School of Law. He worked at a nonprofit that helped young people with mental and physical disabilities. He was York's Director of Economic Development and served in the State House representing York County from 2007 to 2013 when he was sworn in as the state's Auditor General. He has two children. Here's the format. Just before tonight's debate, there was a random draw for question order. The first candidate gets a minute and a half to answer each question, then the other gets the same amount of time to respond. We're also allowing time for rebuttals or a little back and forth if warranted. And at the end, the candidates will make a final pitch for your vote with a closing statement. All right, gentlemen, let's dive right in. Yours is a contentious race. The entire country is watching. It's been called a microcosm of the Trump-Biden matchup. With such a deep partisan divide, if you win and the opposing party wins the White House, how are you going to reach across the aisle to accomplish legislation that benefits the Susquehanna Valley? And Congressman Scott Perry, we begin with you. Well, thank you very much, Janelle. And I think about a time where I was a member of the Problem Solvers Caucus and the Freedom Caucus, because you're always trying to find a way to do the best you can for your district. And during that period of time, we actually passed in the pro between the two, those two caucuses the No Budget, No Pay Act. Unfortunately, since that time, the Problem Solvers Caucus haven't really, hasn't really solved any, any problems. But I think about some of the great things that I've worked on, like, uh, like a, uh, a program called Youth Build, where I work with a civil rights icon, John Lewis, to, to fund this program, which literally goes into some of our toughest spots in our communities. And I met this young man named Jamil, who was on his way through the criminal justice system. Well, he was on his way into it, unfortunately, but Youth Build helped him find his way out. And, and in, in that, he became a great family man, a great member of our community who's now productive and now mentoring other members of society and, and especially youth at risk to make sure they stay out of the criminal justice system. So whether it's working on things like that or hydroelectric power produced right in the 10th Congressional District that helps create jobs and, and helps create clean energy. That was with uh, uh, Susan Bonamucci from Washington, or from the great Northwest. So. Um, I've had a great uh, track run at, uh, at bipartisan work. So you would have no problem working with a President Biden if that happens? I will work with anybody for solutions that help our country. All right. Auditor General De Pasquale. Yes, thank you, Janelle, and thank you to WGAL. My first job when I was 14 years old was as a Little League umpire. And that taught me, regardless of who was the home team, you had to call it like you saw it. And just a couple weeks ago, former Republican governor, Tom Corbett said when he was governor, and I was the Auditor General, even though we were of different parties, I called it like I saw it and didn't play politics. And that would be my exact same approach as your member of Congress. As a former state legislator, I passed bipartisan 
climate change legislation, and as the Auditor General of Pennsylvania, I found over a billion dollars wasted by Harrisburg and even uncovered enormous waste in the pharmacy, in the pharmaceutical drug industry that led to bipartisan legislation to reduce the cost of prescription drugs. Again, I've been tough and fair on a Republican governor and tough and fair on a Democratic governor. And it goes back to, again, my first job as a Little League umpire. Call it like you see it. At the end of the day, the public does not care, really does not care who the president is. Obviously, they, they're going to vote, but they want us to work with the president regardless. And I've said from the beginning that I do think President Trump is onto something, that China has been taking advantage of us on trade, and that it's clearly something that if he is reelected and I'm honored to be your member of Congress, I will work with President Trump to make sure we get fair trade deals that look out for American workers and look out for American consumers and make sure that we grow our economy and create manufacturing jobs back here in the United States. Thank you, Auditor General. All right, moving on. President Trump has repeatedly singled out Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf, claiming he has mishandled the coronavirus situation here in Pennsylvania. Do you agree, and what would you have done differently, Auditor General De Pasquale? Yeah, thank Look, I've been tough and fair on a Republican governor and tough and fair on a Democratic governor. And I think every governor, regardless of party, and including the president, at the beginning of this pandemic, had a very challenging situation. It was something that we had never dealt with before. But obviously, I just completed a very tough audit of Governor Wolf's business waiver program. And that is something that I think was mishandled from the very beginning. I've toured small businesses throughout South Central Pennsylvania, whether they were uh, small businesses that didn't get the direct aid that they were supposed to get from Washington, like the LA Lakers getting money and not small businesses here in South Central Pennsylvania, or businesses allowed to stay open that shouldn't have gotten a waiver, or businesses that were supposed to be shut down that were allowed to get a waiver because they had special interest influence. I was tough on Governor Wolf, and that to me was a big mistake. We also were very tough on our audit of the nursing home industry. We showed exactly what needed to be done to better protect our seniors. And unfortunately, the legislature and the administration didn't do enough based on that audit to better protect our seniors. But at the end of the day, Washington, D.C. failed us. They didn't get enough aid to small businesses. They didn't get enough aid to our assisted living in our nursing home industries to get that protective equipment. And the net result of that has been disastrous. An economy in tatters and over 220,000 dead Americans. We can do better. All right, Congressman. Well, COVID really and the pandemic started in our office, other than the news with uh, some folks, some of my constituents, our voters, stranded in Japan on a ship because it was quarantined. And then before it really became really in the, in the consciousness of central Pennsylvania, I held a forum at Hershey Medical Center and I brought in experts in the medical community, the first responder community, uh, school districts, uh, uh, just concerned citizens and so on and so forth. And we talked about what potentially was coming and answered their questions. And beyond that, I held a, a, a series of town hall forums where tens of thousands of people listened in and got to speak directly to medical experts and get their questions answered as the sands kind of shifted and, and, and COVID-19 and the pandemic changed. Do this, but don't do that, and answered all those questions. Now, during this period of time, our governor's policies was to force our most vulnerable population into nursing homes where COVID existed and where they might, uh, they might suffer mortality because of it. And I called for a federal investigation. At that period of time, in the worst part, part of the state, I know the Auditor General, my opponent, says he had he investigated or audited the nursing homes, but I'm talking during COVID when our seniors were dying. He said that they stonewalled them. Nobody stonewalls the Auditor General. And, and what happened was, is that uh, his staff even told him he canceled the audit. So while our seniors were dying in our nursing homes, our, our general, my opponent, was sitting on his hands. That, that's unacceptable. Okay, you pretty much yeah. uh, name-checked. Auditor General, go ahead. We outlined every recommendation that needed, to get ha that needed to be done to better protect our seniors. Improve the nurse-to-patient ratio. Have more random inspections. And make sure the inspectors were more randomly chosen so that the facility wouldn't become more comfortable. We outlined those specific recommendations, if the legislature and the administration had implemented those, the seniors of our state would have been better protected. All right, thank you. And just to be clear before we move on, you're comfortable with President Trump's criticism of Governor Wolf's handling? I am. I'm critical of Governor Wolf's handling. We've been reaching out to the governor since March. 
I haven't gotten any correspondence, not a phone call, not an email, not a returned letter since March. I know we don't agree, but we got to work together. All right. Thank you very much. Perhaps there's no issue more personal to voters than health care. Congressman Perry, you've voted several times to repeal the Affordable Care Act. Auditor General De Pasquale, you're pledging to protect it and expand it. Why is your health care approach correct and your opponents wrong? And Congressman Perry, to be fair, the ACA has now been in effect for about 10 years. Do you have another plan since you're voting to repeal it? Do you have a replacement plan? So I will tell you, Janelle, when I came to Congress, I'm a, I, have a family, I have a family that has close members that have pre-existing conditions. As we stand here this evening, one of my close family members lays in a hospital bed. So this isn't just policy. This is personal to me. And so the question really is, is there only one way to provide health care to our citizens? And, and, and some people think the only way is a top-down, driven approach, one size fits all, that we were told was going to reduce costs, which didn't, and, and so it wasn't more affordable, and it wasn't better. The promises of, of the ACA never materialized. And so I want to tell you a story about how when we were going to repeal the ACA and we, we demanded that coverage for pre-existing conditions was in there, it was not in there. But we were told, well, it's a binary choice. And I fought the Washington establishment and I actually convinced the president that what he was being told was wrong. Because the, the answer is, is that there are more, more than one way to do it. And we had a solution set in hand and we voted for that in the House. It did materialize in the Senate. But we can do better on this, and we have to keep working on it so that patients and their doctors are deciding their care, care not a top-down, one-size-fits-all government approach that leaves out the patients and has insurance companies deciding our care. Well, the latest challenge to the ACA is going to hit the Supreme Court about a week after the November election. Yes, do, you hope, um, do you hope that it's overturned? I hope that we can do better and find solutions. The one we have is not working. Most of the ACA has been dismantled, including Democrats voting to get rid of the Cadillac tax. So it's a bipartisan agreement that this has failed. Do you hope it's overturned? I do. Okay, thank you very much. Auditor General De Pasquale. Yes, when I was a freshman in high school, I came home from school. And that evening I had a baseball game and I could tell something was wrong in our home. It was just more quiet. Italian household, <laughs> um, usually pretty loud. That day it was not loud. And eventually my parents blurted out, Anthony has muscular dystrophy. As people now know, we didn't call it when I was in high school or a teenager. He had a pre-existing condition. And that was your brother, Anthony. That was my brother, Anthony. And we were never able to have health insurance for him. And when he passed, not only was it emotionally devastating, but it was financially devastating. And I agree the Affordable Care Act needs to be improved. But one of the things when it was signed into law by President Obama was that I thought at least families would not have to go through what we had to go through with Anthony, as much as it can be difficult. Congressman Perry, 12 times, 12 times, has voted to take away protections for people with pre-existing conditions. And right now is supporting a lawsuit that he just said he hopes is successful that even though there are 220,000 dead Americans because of COVID-19, that lawsuit would take away, if he has his way and the Affordable Care Act is overturned, would take away health care from tens of thousands of people right here in South Central Pennsylvania. Please know that if I am your member of Congress, I will fight to protect people with pre-existing conditions with everything I've got. Well, because of coronavirus, there are now about five million more of them. Congressman Perry? The, the Affordable Care Act left many Americans, even as it stood, without insurance coverage, without health care coverage. My opponent acts like it was the panacea, it was the fix-all, be-all, but even with it enacted, it didn't cover all Americans, number one, and it, it, and it increased the cost for almost every single American that was paying for health care. What don't you like about it? I don't like the fact that you don't have any flexibility, that you have to buy things that you don't want and can't afford, and that it, it essentially leads to rationing of health care like we see all around the rest of the world that has this top-down approach. Um, we, we can do better in America. Okay, thank you. Very quickly, we need to move on, yeah. but I'll give you a final word. I do believe we can do better. Andrea Musselman from Elementary Coffee is a business owner and can't afford health insurance. That's why I say we need to do better, and we can build upon the Affordable Care Act, allow people that like their private insurance to keep it, 
And if you don't like it, you can buy into Medicare or we have automatic enrollment into Medicaid to get 100% coverage. All right, we have a lot to cover. Let's, let's move on. Maybe we'll have a chance a little later to revisit. Let's talk about money right now. You have both raised a very large amount, roughly $2 million, and you're both making serious allegations. We've seen the ads about where the other is getting that money. And on this one, we're going to start with you, Auditor General De Pasquale. Look, I'm proud that so many people support my effort to change Washington and bring our country together. People have seen my record as the Auditor General of Pennsylvania, being a tough and fair, independent watchdog on a Republican Governor Tom Corbett, and being a tough and fair, independent watchdog on a Democratic Governor Tom Wolf. People have seen that I independently found over 3,200 untested rape kits, and through my leadership in building out a coalition, we reduced that backlog by 97%. Through my leadership, we found 58,000 unanswered phone calls at the child abuse hotline and traveling all over the state to make sure that we're better protecting our children. And even in my own department, getting rid of 244 cars and finding waste in the prescription drug industry and leading to bipartisan legislation to reduce the cost of prescription drugs. So people want to see me elected in Congress. People know Washington, D.C. is broken, that both parties have failed us there. And my leadership is about holding powerful people accountable and bringing our country together and working across the aisle to get things done, to improve health care, lower the cost of prescription drugs, tackle climate change like the moral crisis it is, and make sure we get a vaccine and get this country moving back again economically. And that's why people are supporting my campaign, and that's why I'm going to win this election. Before we move on to the congressman, um, you didn't totally answer the question. Mm -hmm. It's great to hear about your, your record, and that's what we mm -hmm. want the voters to know. But you've um, made a lot of allegations about the money he's taking, mm -hmm. and why is that? Are you afraid that Big Pharma is going to influence how he votes in Congress? What are you Look, talking about? I'm not here to tell you how it influences. All I know is this. Congressman Perry has taken about $103,000 from Big Pharma, then voted against lowering the cost of prescription drugs. That much is part of the record. Whether that's an influence or not, I can't say that. But I do know he's taken the money and he voted their way. I will vote to lower the cost of prescription drugs. Okay, thank you. Um, this is a good point. Let's move on, Congressman. Janelle, thanks so much for the question. And if you know my record, regardless of whether it's campaign finances or whether our, it's our privacy, I've always been a very strong and vocal opponent of transparency. And I actually would ask Channel 8 to take a look at our campaign finance filing reports because every voter deserves to know where, who's financing our campaigns. And I have absolutely nothing to hide. And when you do that, I'm sure you're going to find, and you can report it, that my opponent is wildly exaggerating the claim he just made. But while we're talking about my opponent, Let's talk about how disappointed we should be that my opponent took nearly $100,000 from a disgraced, Philly, corrupt uh, union boss that's got, that stands under a this cloud. This Johnny Doc who we keep hearing yes, about in exactly. the Yes, exactly. 116 federal indictments, Janelle. And, and if that's not enough for you, the most high-profile case that the Auditor General is supposed to be uh, investigating is the governor's handling of this waiver program. He stonewalled it. Meanwhile, the governor has highlighted and headlined one of his campaign events, fundraising events, raising tens of thousands of dollars. And if that's not enough for you, how disappointing would it be to know that Speaker Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi, did a fundraiser for my opponent down in Philadelphia because he knows that, that her policies and the things she believes in are not going to sell very well in this district. And finally, if the voters don't know, my opponent has never answered the question about his ethics violations charges regarding his illegal use of campaign do uh, dollars, state dollars in a federal election. So I'm clear on my record and I challenge everybody and anybody to take a look. Okay, the WGAL News 8 ad watches have taken a look. And before we go back to you, Auditor General, very quickly, so are you saying that the considerable amount of money that you took from the larger pharmaceutical companies, that this has nothing to do with your voting to lower prescription drug prices? I voted to make sure that pharmaceutical companies have the ability to search out for cures and, and, uh, and, and test, and, and they're characterizing that way. But let me also say, this large amount of money that my opponent's talking about, I want you to break that down and go look. And also, by the way, look at the pharmaceutical companies that my opponent's taken money from. I'm, I'm ready to have the, op the record opened up completely. But what about these other charges? Are, are, we, are we just going to forget about those? What no, about these ethics go. violations? We're going to go answer right now. Yeah. Let's First talk of all, it. you can see all of our reports at FEC.gov. First of all, that's number one. Number two, 
Scott Perry has taken over $100,000 from Big Pharma, and he's taken money from Big Insurance. Then he voted their way against lowering the cost of prescription drugs, and he voted to overturn the ACA. Both would have led to huge financial windfalls. And when it comes to the donation from the governor, let me be clear. I was tough and fair on a Republican governor and tough and fair on a Democratic governor, including have a vicious report against the governor's business waiver program during COVID-19, even after that contribution. I do exactly what I did as a Little League umpire. I call them like I see them, and the people that support my campaign want me to be what I exactly will be, a better voice for our region in Washington, D.C. Very quickly, because we've seen so many of the ads. Johnny Doc, yeah. who is he? Why are you taking his money? Well, first of all, that was an Auditor General campaign, and it was years ago. And secondly, the record I have on the Delaware River Port Authority is clear. When I became a board member at the Delaware River Port Authority, their finances were in shambles. Today, their bond rating is not only improved, not only have we cleaned up corruption there, but for the first time in two decades, under my leadership, we actually cut the tolls. Now, people may not know what the Delaware River Port Authority is. It's when you're actually driving from Philadelphia to New Jersey, it's a toll bridge. And through my leadership, we cleaned up corruption and lowered the tolls that was better for the working families of South Jersey and for the Philadelphia region. That's my record at the Delaware River Port Authority. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, very quickly, Congressman Perry, and then we have to go. I appreciate it once again. Um, it, people might rightfully assess that my opponent sold his seat to Johnny Doc. The, the FBI just raided their offices again last week. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but Johnny Doc speaks for the Auditor General at the Delaware River Port Authority. The $100,000 that the, you have to go break that down. It's nothing close. It's not even minutely close to what the, my opponent is okay. talking about. Okay, I want to cut you off there. I just want to say, did Johnny Doc give you money for this campaign in no, addition to? No. Okay, so we're talking about no, the years he ago. He donated to my. Campaign. When I say he, the International okay. Brotherhood All right. of Electrical Workers donated to my Auditor General campaign. The reason why, by the way, in my reelection, I was the only candidate in all of Pennsylvania that year that got the endorsement from the Pennsylvania Business Roundtable and the AFL-CIO because people knew I called it like I see it. All right, thank you both. Gentlemen, this is a good time to take a quick break. You're watching WGAL's Commitment 2020 debate for the 10th U.S. Congressional District. More questions for the candidates when we come right back.